ಕಸ್ಮಾಂದ್ರಿಯಾದ ನಿಯಮ್ಯ ಭರತರ್ಷಭ ಪಾಪಮಾನ ಪ್ರಜಹೀಯ ಜ್ಞಾನ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನನಾಶನ so having described the hideouts of the enemy krishna is now moving forward to tell us how do we combat it so we could say the 40th was about was was about the hideouts of the enemy the 36 was the question who who is it 37 was the identity 38 was the reach the the scope the gravity the reach 39 was the strategy that it covers our knowledge so now the height also now if you consider 41 it is the first step if you consider the fortress if a, if, a, if somebody knows that there is a fortress and there is an enemy army coming Mm-hmm. the enemy marching so then the first thing to do is close the gates mm-hmm. make sure that the enemy doesn't infiltrate the first step itself so similarly krishna is saying over here first step is Indriyanya, the, that beginning with the senses. This is how we need to, so we can say the best way to deal with temptation. Is what? Don't deal with temptation. So, now, of course, this is not always possible. But whenever it is, and it will be possible many more times than what we think it is, if somebody tends to overeat, and then their workplace, maybe don't keep any food over there. Somebody tries to, um, somebody is vulnerable to alcohol, then don't keep any alcohol in your home. You say, I want it for my guests. I'm not going to drink it, but my guests, I want to be a good host. I want for my guests, I, if they want it, they ask for it, I have to give it to them. Well, you have a guest inside you that is your own craving that lust and that guest is going to consume that the likelihood of that consuming it is much more so now this might seem opposite to what uh, was mentioned the what i mentioned previously that something like prohibition rarely works so here when you talk about don't deal with temptation the principle here is boundaries Now, boundaries can be at various levels. There can be zero tolerance. There could be low tolerance. Now, here I'm using the word tolerance in a particular way over here. I'll explain that. Really modest tolerance. So, for example, many countries have a zero tolerance approach to terrorism. Or, say, universities may have, a, in America, a zero tolerance approach to racism. That means, you know, not a single instance of this will be entertained. So, in some cases, when we have the boundaries, we may decide there's zero tolerance for this. Now, of course, we do not live in a world which will allow us to have zero tolerance for everything unhealthy. That's not possible, but there are always people who may want to drink, there are always people who may want to do certain things which are unhealthy. And the only way we can have zero tolerance to everything bad to everything unhealthy is to have an absolute dictatorship that dictatorship decides that this this is unhealthy and that that is healthy and that this is all that is allowed and that is all that is not allowed but then the problem is when something like this is done, what if the dictatorship itself becomes unhealthy? The dictators have bias. 
and they say this is good this is bad although some of it may, it may be good only for them it may not be good for others so we we cannot have complete uh, complete act, complete elimination of all temptation from the world now this does not mean that this approach is impossible to use it may be usable in certain cases so for example if a person is an, is a vulnerable to something then they may decide that this is not what i am going to get into so for example now this is not necessarily a ideal that everybody has to follow but say there could be individual boundaries uh, or individual decisions where somebody may say zero tolerance to the phones during meals during meal time the family is together we'll have no phones at all now that might seem like a harmless issue you know if i take a phone call what's the issue no but is a time for us to be together okay that's what you want to do that 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 it's an example but that may not be for everyone but some people it may be very important so similarly some people may say that no phones during meetings Mm. And some place sometimes when people go to high security areas, they say you have to keep your phone. If somebody goes say to Camp David or something like that, the high security place, most people will not be allowed to carry their phones over there. Is okay. So that, that is a zero tolerance approach over there. Mm. Now, wherever it's necessary, it's helpful. Say if we want to study a. study bhagavad gita for example and our phone keeps distracting us then we may decide that okay for the 15 minutes or one hour i'm going to study the bhagavad gita i'm not going to keep the phone on me maybe i'll keep the phone in the next room so zero tolerance to distraction at that this is possible and when especially in two situations when indulgence can be deadly so for example if somebody a young person is getting into drugs many places many companies have zero tolerance policy for drugs okay if you are if you are smoking weed in work in the work then you are out you are fired immediately now some people may say weed is not that dangerous okay that's their decision but if indulgence is deadly then there can be zero tolerance that's a workable policy or another situation could be when focus is essential in the sense of it is a matter of it's hugely consequential so for example some people may say that okay when you are driving you should not be texting some some countries they have heavy fines if somebody is seen handling the phone and especially not not just looking at the phone but handling the phone while they are driving so at that time there could be zero tolerance so each one of us may decide that particular areas i will i'll have zero tolerance on this it is okay it may not be necessary for everyone but it is necessary for some people now when i'm talking individual boundaries there could also be collective boundaries So, for example, if some places are, say, monasteries or nunneries, hmm, then the people from the opposite gender are not allowed over there. There's a zero tolerance policy for that, and that's fair enough. Now, that doesn't mean you attack and attack and hurt and injure the person who comes in, but that's that's not allowed over there. So, there could be collective boundaries also. so some countries for example i was visiting singapore some time ago and some countries in the middle east also they have zero tolerance policy for drugs so if somebody comes in they might be accidentally carrying some drugs if they carry it they are immediately severe punishments are given so now we are not recommending that i'm just giving that as an example that there could be zero tolerance policies on some areas and it could be individually decided it could be collectively decided so if there is danger and we want to avoid the danger then there could be zero tolerance policy 
and uh, having said that for most most situations in our life we may have to have a low tolerance that we cannot have zero but we can have low so for example in uh, in most cultured societies even now even now now when sexual boundaries are much more much more lax uh, as compared to the past but still uh, if a man comes into a woman's uh, room when she is alone and he is alone you know yeah what are you doing here unless she wants him there and even if something else happens afterwards and he says no why did you let him in that would be a valid question to ask and this is not to blame the victim but for some way some things now if somebody has got a woman has got a heart attack and is a doctor who is coming in to save the patient that's a completely different situation but in general there there needs to be low tolerance for certain things we cannot make it zero but it has to be low one of my friends is a author and he says he writes in his room that out he is when he is writing he says i put a notice also you know he spent for his family and also his friends you know when i am writing if you disturb me i am politely telling you i will break your legs <laughs> now he's not actually going to do that but the idea is low tolerance that then there is an emergency of course you know if the house is on fire you would obviously want to know about it uh, if somebody has suddenly got a medic medical health, medical issue or something like that you want to know you are there at home but just because you are at home doesn't mean you are available for everything at home you are working from home there is low tolerance so for many of us um what happens is low tolerance means boundaries are there boundaries are enforced but they are not absolutized mm -hmm. there can be exceptions and this is where e most most people will be now what exactly is low will vary from person to person but if is in today's world also you know, even if somebody is look very good looking uh, if somebody stares at them that's considered to be not polite and after the after some time if, if somebody keeps staring well then what are you doing that's that's considered uncivilized behavior so there's there's not much there is some tolerance but not a high tolerance to it. now especially with respect to people who are good looking now good looking can be males females anyone but we cannot have zero tolerance in the sense that you can't expect people to walk with around with closed eyes but if there is constant uh, leering staring ogling that is beyond impolite that is indecent and that's generally not to be that that's not accepted in society that's not to be done so um, that's low tolerance now some places there could be moderate tolerance so if you consider in different countries the men and when when people talk with each other in some countries people come very close to each other and talk with each other some places people keep a significant distance to talk with each other and how much distance people keep that may also vary between uh, whether it's people on the same people on the same gender talking different genders talking whatever it is so the point is that boundaries are essential so like this we could have multiple levels of boundaries some people may say that with that you know, once i start watching tv i'll spend hours watching tv so i will not even keep a tv no tv in my house at all mm -hmm. so that could be okay that's mm -hmm. that could be an example of zero tolerance but you know if somebody can have fixed tv hours you know so parents may decide okay they are small kids okay you can play this video game for this much time mm -hmm. now that's a, that's a low tolerance now each individual may decide accordingly you know i, I need some i need some recreation and the tv is a good recreation well okay if that's your boundary but then it's important for each person as you rightly said to take responsibility be honest and sometimes i'm going to go to another point here but sometimes you no know, when these boundaries are being we are deciding boundaries 
there are multiple things involved over here. First is, as I said, the individual decisions. Now, individual decisions also have to be, there also has to be uh, others who are involved. Others advise, counsel, guidance. That's required. Because sometimes we have a capacity to deceive ourselves. So when we are having individual boundaries, that we may think, yeah, this, this is okay for me. But it may not be okay. So we need others' counsel to confirm what we are doing. And when there are collective boundaries, collective boundaries, you could say, are basically like the state boundaries or the authorities outside the boundaries. But then here also, others' input is needed. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise it will become authoritarian. So some people can live within those boundaries, but others can, others cannot. So if, if one boundary is imposed for everyone, so now sometimes the person may say that you know cell phones are such a distraction, they're so entangling. Therefore, no cell phones. Well, you may be, you may decide that you won't have a cell phone, but maybe you have a secretary who will give you important messages. But not everybody has the luxury of having a secretary. If you tell no cell phones for yourself, that's fair enough. But you can't impose that for everyone. So everybody's functional roles, everybody's practical requirement, they also have to be considered. So the point is that deciding boundaries is something which you are, which is not easy. But before we go into the specifics of deciding boundaries, the principle needs to be accepted. That boundaries are, are vital. So there is the principle and there is the specific. In the principle is universal. If somebody starts debating the principle itself, then it becomes a problem. And then the specifics, may they are variable. So even in an extremely liberal culture, say for example, most traditional sexual boundaries have been rejected. Whether they be boundary of marriage, the boundary of religion, boundary of this, boundary of that. But that doesn't mean there are no boundaries. Consent is an absolute boundary and that's considered non-negotiable. So, so the point is the boundaries will always be there. Now, interestingly, I'll go to the last point of this verse, that Krishna says that Jnana Vijnana Nashinam. Why do we need boundaries? Now, we could say there are obviously, otherwise we'll indulge indiscriminately. But Krishna is giving a specific reason over here. He says, because the lust is the destroyer, Nashinam. Of two things. He says, destroyer of knowledge and of a realization. Now, that um, lust is a destroyer of knowledge. That has already been discussed how it covers our knowledge. This was discussed in 339 and to some extent 40 also, but 339. So that it covers our knowledge and distorts our understanding. But now it's interesting. Vijnana means realization. So what does it mean that lust destroys realization? That means it's like uh, the force of lust, the, when the force of lust infects, affects us, we reject our own experiences. It's not that somebody else is telling us, no, don't eat so much, don't drink so much. It's like we only in the past, we ate too much, we drank too much and it was terrible afterwards. And our own experience is there. That means we have a realization how troublesome this is. And yet, we reject that realization. Oh, I don't care. No, it won't happen this time. No, it happened last time. You know, it happened a dozen times. There's practically no time when somebody drinks a lot and doesn't get a, hang, a hangover, a splitting hangover. And still, 
Next time they do, yeah, this time I told him. So it's almost like uh, sometimes people say that boundaries are imposed by others and they take away individual autonomy. But you know, in one sense, the greatest threat to individual freedom. People want to have their freedom in America, the iconic Statue of Liberty in New York. But the greatest threat to the individual freedom is actually the individual. That means, yes, there can be political slavery, there can be cultural, uh, cultural the political tyranny or slavery can be there. But if you consider today's world, uh, we could say slavery or some bondage at a political, social, collective level, political or collective level, it is actually very less now. It is there, but it is very less. But at an individual level, in the form of addictions, for example, you know, addict, addicts are basically slaves. It's huge. And it's increasing. Newer and newer forms of addictions are coming up. So the point is, boundaries are essential. And then to the extent we recognize needs for boundaries, if we don't recognize, if we don't recognize and reinforce the boundaries, then we will keep doing the things which we know are bad for us, which, not, which we have ourselves um, experienced to be bad. Now, there's one adi, when poet who wrote about the addiction, he says, like addressing the addict addiction, he said, you treat me badly, I trust you madly. And it's such a tragic predicament. Normally, if somebody treats us badly, we won't even want to be with that person. Even if we are with that person, we'll be on high alert. But with respect to the things that we get addicted to, every time we indulge, we get into trouble. We feel terrible, we feel empty, we feel miserable. And yet, next time, when the allurement comes, Oh, this time it will be good. This time it will be different. That, well, it won't be different. That when, when you say destroyer of realization, the destroyer of realization means that we start believing this time it will be different. But it won't be. And that's why without boundaries, we will end up repeating the same experience again and again and never learning from the experience. They say experience is the best teacher. And of course, a fool learns in no other way. But you could say experience is the best teacher. So the second part is fool learns no other way. That means we don't need to experience everything to learn. We can learn from others' experience. Others' experience can become our intelligence. So that means so we could say there are three levels of people over here. But what you can say is that but if somebody doesn't learn even from experience, then what are what are going to say for them? They are worse than fools. They are, you can say, super fools, tragically speaking. So, this is this is a terrible thing. So that's why if with, with so basically, when there are boundaries, you could say there are wise. We can say they learn from others' experience. We all have heard stories of how greed can destroy, lust can destroy. Anger can destroy. And we learn from that. And then the less wise or uh, the foolish, they, they need their own experience. But the really foolish, you could say the super foolish, they don't learn 
even from their own experience. And this is the tra tragedy that if it is to be avoided, then we absolutely need boundaries. That's why sometimes when somebody is addicted to something and they just are not able to give it up, then they're told they get them admitted, admitted in the addiction centers where society or the environment imposes boundaries on them. But there's no access here for you for that, for that drug or for whatever. So that way, hopefully that intelligence comes up and they, either some people will move down this track and they'll become worse. They could have learned from the experience, but they never learn. But fortunately, some people can go upward also. So this is the, you could see this is the path of degradation. And this is the path of elevation, of becoming more and more wise. So now boundaries alone are not enough. Something more than boundaries are also required. But boundaries are a vital first step. What more is required? Krishna will talk in the next world, next two verses. So our overall theme in this verse was that why, why boundaries? Krishna is talking about boundaries here. So the first thing we discussed is that when there's danger, uh, then we need protection and protection comes through boundaries. So with respect to boundaries, we discuss a spectrum that there could be the spectrum could be uh, zero tolerance, low tolerance, and then moderate tolerance. We discussed examples of each of these. Uh, how exactly things can work in terms of zero, some, for some things, zero tolerance is required. And for some things, low tolerance is a significant point of time we spend in discussing those examples. And then how this can be otherwise, if no boundaries, then lust can be the destroyer of not just knowledge, but which is already discussed, but also of realization, where we fail to learn even from our own experiences. So thank you very much. Hare Krishna.